Hi everyone, my name is Dave White. I'm the owner of NSR Tactical and today we are at the Holster Smith workshop and we are going to be making a one-piece fold-over holster. This is just a prop so you know what we're talking about. So this is some of the tools that we prefer to use. An arbor press, some tape, a measuring device, a Stabilo pencil, an Omni grid, a razor knife, countersink, some protective equipment, a thermometer. Today we're going to be using a vacuum press and a t-shirt press along with a drill press, sander, and either a heat gun or hair straightener. The materials you're going to be using, some kydex, and your molding prop, along with some pre-made blockouts. So let's get started. The first step in making a one-piece fold-over holster is that we have to determine how much material we actually need. We have a multi-mold split board here with a sight channel. And we have to measure from outside to outside of the trigger guard plus a little extra. So we'll take our tape measure and we'll measure from outside the trigger guard to outside of the other trigger guard is about seven inches. Plus a little extra, let's call it eight. Eight inches is generally the magic number. We got our width, now our height, let's just call it eight inches. Let's go ahead and cut our kydex. We're going to measure eight inches on the top, eight inches on the bottom. Take our straight edge, score once, score twice, and then cut. Oh, break. Okay. Now we don't need this much material, we can cut a little bit off. Eight, eight. Now we have the material that we need. Let's move on to the next step, which is forming. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to heat and form. We're going to take our piece, our 8 by 8 sheet. We're going to move this out of the way. We're going to have shiny side up, textured side, shiny side. Place it in there like so. Close this up. <clears throat> now while this is heating up, we're going to talk about what we have going on over here. All right, this is our split mold. Uh, we got a sight channel jig in there with the corners rounded off so we don't poke a hole in our membrane. We got our, our belt loop attachment jig taped on there along with two eighth inch pieces of kydex for our adjustable retention on our holster. Um, I took the uh, heat sink board off so there's a better uh, vacuum. It'll pull down a little tighter and a little quicker and uh, get better definition. So we want to make sure that the two pieces are straight back here or up here, whatever. I want to make sure, sure everything is good. All right, our piece is heated up. Now we're ready to form. Raise that up, move it out of the way. Take our piece and we're just going to flip it over so textured side is up. 
And we're going to lay it on here. We're going to have equal amount of space on the outside of the trigger guard. So I'm going to stick my finger in here and kind of get equal amount of space. Okay, we're going to close it. Flip the lever. Now what we're looking for is material on either side of the trigger guard. So we're going to run our thumbs around here like this. And get good definition all the way around. Maybe a little bit through here. And just start detailing areas. Now we wait for it to cool. Now, it'll take about five minutes to air cool like this. Or alternatively, you could take a bucket with some water in it, maybe throw some ice in it, and get a rag. And uh, throw it up on top of here, and it'll cool off much faster. Like, usually around 30 seconds. That's my preferred method. Um, and it just moves along a lot quicker. So we'll come back when this is done cooled off. All right, it's been about a minute. Since there's no foam, it cools off a lot faster. If you can place your hand on top of here and it just be mediocrely warm, it's ready to come out. All right, let's peel this thing out. Make sure the lever is off. Stick my finger in here, release the pressure. Peel this thing out. All right. Now it's ready for bending. All right, now for our one piece taco or fold over holster, what we need to do is we need to fold it over before we draw on it. Now, before we're able to fold it over, we have this lip here that we need to get rid of. Also, we're going to be using a hair straightener to heat up the heat channel, I mean, a sight channel. So, this bumps and whatnot are going to get in the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut all the way through here, cut this out, all the way around, so our hair straightener can get in there and heat up the side channel. All right, let's do that. cut the ends off, now we need to fold it. The reason why we cut the ends off is because we need a flat surface for it to be able to fold onto itself. Okay, if we don't, then the two pieces won't, or the two halves won't come completely together and the holster will be off. We're going to use our hair straightener. This is the uh, fastest, most efficient method that I've found to be able to heat up sight channels. That's why we needed a nice, smooth sight channel through here because we have two plates going together. If we have bumps, it won't be able to fully um, enclose or touch all the kydex and it won't heat it all up. It'll just be a big pain. Um, you can also take some parchment paper and wrap these elements up. Uh, it'll, you'll be able to get it hotter, um, but it won't burn the kydex. I have it set kind of low right now, so it shouldn't burn. So we'll just place it in the center. like this, and we're just letting it heat up. Hold it there for a few seconds. As a side note, 
Kydex can be uh, spot treated very, very um, well. The heat won't travel very far at all. That's the other reason why we like to use a hair straightener. If you use like a heat gun, that extra heat blowing off the heat gun will start to affect your definition along the sides here. But with this, you can completely localize it right on the sight channel. And also, we don't have a sight channel jig here to be able to get a nice, crisp, clean, square sight channel. Uh, we're just going to have to fold it over and do our best to make it uh, look presentable. But um, any, any sight channel jig where you have a square sight channel dowel can be crammed down into a slot, right, and create a nice square sight channel. But this, this will do. We're just going to keep heating it up. See, it's already getting pliable here. One of my guys has this down to a science. Yeah, uh, we call him Fold Master Flex, just because he's so good at it. <laughs> All right, so you want it. In theory, you want it about 350 degrees, but if you're not going to measure it, you just want it floppy. Okay. All right. I'm going to take our mold. I'm going to squish it together. I'm going to take a clamp, throw a clamp on there, and then just detail the sight channel the best we can. Now let's cool off. We can go ahead and take this clamp off, and now it's ready to have the pattern drawn on it. Now we're ready to draw out our pattern. You can let your imagination run wild here. I mean, literally, you can come up with any kind of design and just make it. This is how I do it. A couple, one thing you want to do is avoid sharp corners on this edge right here. Uh, it can be, especially wearing appendix, be uh, very uncomfortable. So let's get to it. All right, so we have our pattern here uh, that we're going to mount our belt loops to. And then we have a space right here where we're going to add our adjustable retention. Now we have to decide how high we want this body shield. Now I cut some of this out, so we are going to be limited to how high we can actually make the body shield. One thing, especially on the shield, is you want to make sure that you cover up that safety. That little safety is a very sharp uh, piece of metal that will rub on you and cause you lots of pain. Hey guys, we're going to take a little break right now and I'm just going to say that if you have any questions about any of this, go ahead and shoot me an email, dave at nsrtactical.com and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Also, if this looks like it's too much or you just you know, a lot of equipment to invest in or if you just don't have the time, go ahead and take a look at our website, nsrtactical.com and uh, we'll be able to make anything you want. All right, thanks for watching. Now let's get back to it. So I like to create open bottom holsters. So we're going to go ahead and score the bottom like that. And we're going to determine where our um, re adjustable retention is going to be. So the number I like to choose is half inch by half inch and then three eighths out from that. So we'll do that. So we'll I generally like to just curve this around. Make it nice and round so if it's if you're carrying an appendix it won't stab you in the leg. 
Now let's do, I like to call a standard height body shield. So we'll go ahead and draw that. You want to make sure that you cover the whole trigger guard, okay? You don't want any of the trigger guard exposed. Go ahead and just give a slight, oh wait no. We wanted to cover that, so we want to come up all the way up to here. And then give it a slight rake down. And that way, it should cover that safety on the back side. We're only cutting through one side. We're only going to cut on this side, so it's going to look the same on both sides. Now we're going to draw out where our holes for our belt loops are going to be. I typically do half inch spacing right here. So it'll look something like that. Now that we've laid out our one piece fold over holster, now we need to put holes in it. I'm going to grab my safety glasses and get to it. Now we have our holes in our one piece fold over holster. Now we need to clean them to make it look nice. How we're going to do that is we're going to use a countersink bit. This, I believe, is a half inch. It doesn't really matter what size it is as long as it's bigger than the holes that you're using. Uh, we're using quarter inch holes. So you can use a 3 eighths, a half inch, 5 eighths, whatever. It doesn't matter. So let's get to it. All right, we just got done cleaning the holes. Now it's time to cut. One thing I want to say is cut a little bit on the outside of the line because you can always sand more off, but you can't put more on. So let's do it.
All right, we just got done with the rough cut. Now we need to sand and make everything straight and nice. So let's get to it. All right, we just got done sanding. Now we need to knock off all the burrs. We call this stage the pre-buff. Uh, all we're gonna be doing is taking off all the sharp corners and whatnot. Uh, the stage after that would then be polishing, but that's gonna be for another time. So let's get started. All right, so that's the pre-buff stage. I was using an ultra-fine aluminum oxide wheel, uh, a satin wheel. That's what we use, it works great for us. Uh, the next stage would be polishing, but that's gonna be for another video. All right, that concludes our tutorial. My name is Dave White. I'm owner of nsrtactical.com. Follow us on Facebook as NSR Tactical Gear and on Instagram as just NSR Tactical. Thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>